Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. Today in this video, we will see how to interface addressable LEDs with a SDM32. I am going to use WS2812 LEDs for demonstration. This video is divided into two halves. In the first half, I will show how to use pulse width modulation using the DMA. And in the second half, we will use that idea to interface the LED. The first part of the video is configuration, and it is common to both the halves. Let's start with the configuration then. I am using F446RE controller. Give some name to this project, and click finish. Here is our cube MX. First of all I am setting the external crystal for the clock. Before going any forward, let's set up the clock. I have 8 MHz external crystal. I am using the 72 MHz clock. This is to make sure the blue pill users can use the same configuration too. You can use any other clock too, just pay attention to the configuration. Note here the APB1 timer clock is running at 72 MHz, and so is the APB2 clock. This means that all the timers are also going to be running at this frequency, since all of them are connected to either of these buses. Now I am going to use the timer 1 for the PWM. Select the PWM output mode. You can see the pin got selected here. Now comes the very important part. But before that, let's take a look at the device datasheet. This is the datasheet of WS21812. And I also have here for WS2812B. As you can see, the LED data is 24-bit wide. The higher 8 bits are the green color, then next 8 bits for the red color, and then the blue. We must send the bits in this order. We will talk about this in the second part of the video. This is the important part right now. Here is how we send a zero. T0 high is the time for which the pulse must be high. So basically, to send a zero, we must keep the pulse high for 0.35 microseconds, and then keep it low for 0.8 microseconds. It could be plus minus 150 nanoseconds. The total period for the pulse should be 1.25 microseconds. If we see the frequency for this signal, it is 800 kHz. So we need 800 kHz timer frequency now. If you remember, all the timers are running at 72 MHz, anyway I am using timer 1, which is connected to APB2, and its frequency is 72. Now we need to bring this frequency to 800 kHz. We can do this by using a prescaler of 9, and then using an auto reload value of 10. Or we could keep the prescaler 1, and use the ARR of 90. I am gonna go with the second option. You will see in a minute why. By the way, the same setup is also valid for the WS2812B. You can see a little difference in the high time, or low time, but that does not matter that much. We already have uncertainty of 150 nanoseconds to take into account. So
So let's keep the prescaler 1, and set the auto reload register to 90. So why 90, and not 9? The reason is simple. This auto reload value corresponds to 100% of the duty cycle. That means, if we set the value 90 to the capture compare register, we will get PWM signal with 100% duty. Now it's easier to calculate the percentage from 90, compared to 9 right. This is the reason I choose to keep it 90. If you can keep it 100, it will be the best option, because it will be easier to calculate the duty percentage then. So let's see what percentage of duty cycle do we need. As you know, to send a zero, we must keep the signal high for 0.4 microseconds. Out of 1.25, this comes around 32%. This is our duty cycle to send a zero, 32%. And to send a 1, the duty cycle is 68%. Let's see this again. To send a 0, we have to keep the signal, 32% high, and 68% low. Whereas to send a 1, it should be 68% high, and 32% low. So basically, to send a 0, one third of the signal is high, and two-third is low. To send a one, two-third of the signal is high, and one-third is low. Since our 100% duty is 90, we have to calculate the one-third, and two-third from this 90. We will do that later in the code. Let's set up the DMA. Select the timer channel. We are sending the data from memory to the peripheral, so select the option. Keep the DMA to normal, it will be easier to stop it. I am keeping the data width to 16 bits. Click save to generate the project now. Here is our main file. Let's create a function to send the data to the DMA it will take the value of green, red, and blue as the arguments. You know the color codes. First we will create a 32-bit variable, which will store the 24-bit data for the colors. Green should be the MSB, the red, and at last blue. Now we will check the individual bits of the data. I am starting the check from the MSB. If the bit is 1, we will store 60 in that position. Why 60? Remember the datasheet, to send a 1, 2 third of the signal must be high. Since our reload value is 90, the two-third is 60, which will represent the 68% duty cycle. Else, if the bit is 0, we will store 30 in that position. Guys I am storing the MSB to the last, so that the it will be easier for me to represent this data on the scope. When we will see the actual LED code, the MSB will be sent first. Now we will start the PWM with DMA, and send our buffer. In the main function, call the send. I am just using some random color codes. We got some errors. This should be data. And this should be a pointer to 32-bit variable. Ok let's run it now. I am going to connect my analyzer now. 
Start the recording here. Run the code. And that should be enough. This is a bit messy here. You see, DMA is keep sending the data, it doesn't stop. So we need to stop it. Let's look for the callback function. When the data transmission is finished, this pulse finish callback will be called. Inside this callback function, we will stop the DMA. Let's test this now. Okay this time it's definitely stopped. Here we have the pulse. Seems like we got the 24-bit data. You can see the pulse width is 1.25 microseconds. Also some pulse are 833 nanoseconds wide, which is basically a 1. And some are 413 nanoseconds wide, which represents the 0. I have divided this data into three parts. Now remember here that I stored the MSB data into MSB position, so the LSB data is sent first. That means the first 8 bits on the analyzer are for the blue color. These 8 bits are for blue. If I divide it into two parts, you can convert them to hexadecimal now. We have 0 cross 65, which is 101 in decimal. This whole inverted situation is there because I send the LSB first, but we will not do that during the second half. Anyway, then we have 0 cross FF, that is 255. And at last we have 0 cross 05, which is basically 5. Those last four zeros you see, they are there because, it took some time for the interrupt to process, and the DMA to stop, and within that time, DMA transmitted those zeros. Okay this is it about using DMA with PWM. You saw how can we use DMA to change the duty cycle of the signal at really high rate. We can't so that using the simple PWM, because of the time required for the instructions to process. It will mess up our data, that is being transferred to the device. Now we will start the second half. Here we will interface the WS2812 LED. Obviously I am going to use the PWM DMA to do so. Let's start by defining the maximum LEDs that you have in Cascade. If you want to control brightness, set this to 1, or set it to 0. Now LED data is a matrix of 4 columns, and the number of rows will be same as the number of LEDs you have. This will store the values for the color, for the individual LED. LED mod is another matrix, but it will store the values, that are modified as per the brightness requirement. Now I am defining a data sent flag here, which will be set, once the DMA has been stopped. This will make sure that DMA does not send another data, while the first data is still being transmitted. This function will be used, to set color to the respective LED. Here first parameter is the LED number, to which we want to set the color, then the values of the colors. I am keeping the red first, because that's how you find the color codes in general. Here, first column will store the LED number, second column will store the value for green, then red, and last column for blue. Note that we are storing the green value first, as the device requires us to send the green value first. Now this is the function to set the brightness for the LEDs. 
you can input the brightness from 0 to 45. Brightness is nothing special, you just have to scale the actual values by some factor. For example, 255 is the brightest, so 127 will be 50% bright, and around 63 will be 25% brightness. The problem that I faced here, was the linearity in the brightness values. What I mean is, you just can't increment some variable, which will scale the brightness linearly. So I came up with this solution. I am dividing by the tangent of the angle, which varies between 45 to 90 degrees. This way the scale is not perfectly linear, but it remains somewhat linear. Here we don't change the value in the first column, since this is the LED number. And for the rest of the columns, we will divide the LED data by this tangent value, and store it in the LED mod. This entire process will only take place, if you have defined the use of brightness. This is the function, that we will use to send the values to the PWMDMA here I am defining a 32-bit variable, that can store the 24-bit color data. We have to perform this operation for each LED individually. Remember we stored the green code in the second column, red in the third, and blue in the fourth. We will shift the green code by 16 place, red by 8, and no shift for blue. Now we will check individual bit in the color variable. Starting from the MSB. If the bit is 1, we will store the value 60 in the LSB. Note here guys, the MSB is needed to be sent first, and that's why we are storing the MSB from the color, to the LSB in the PWM data. I have already explained you the significance of this 60. It's two-third of the reload value. And if the bit is 0, we will write 30 in that position. Once all the LED values are stored, note here that, I am continuing storing another 50 zeros. This is explained in the datasheet. As you can see, after sending one set of data for all the LEDs, we need to keep the line low for more than 50 microseconds. Since our PWM width is 1.25 microseconds, we can just send 50 zeros to the PWM. This will correspond to more than 50 microseconds delay for the driver. And by the way, you can see here, the data for all the LEDs must be sent together. The driver will use the first 24 bits for the first LED, and automatically shifts the rest of it to the second LED which will be further shifted to third, then fourth, and so on. So that's why, after sending the data for all the LEDs at once, we must send a low for 50 microseconds, to indicate that there is another set of data coming next. And after all the storing is finished, we will send the data to the DMA. I haven't changed the variable here yet. PWM data can store, 24 times the LEDs, plus 50 values. That extra 50 is used, to store this reset code. Now after sending the data, we will wait for this flag to set. This will indicate that DMA has been stopped, and you can send another set of data now. These are all the functions needed. Now let's send some color data. Here I will set the LED 0 first. Red is 255, and others are 0. So this will be purely red. Then set the green to the first LED, and blue to the second LED. 
And now we will call the WS2812 send, to send this data to the respective LEDs. Let's build it. Ok we have got some errors. I have defined it wrong here. This seems alright now. We have to define the math.h also, for the tangent function. Let's run it. Ok it didn't work. I forgot to include the brightness value. Let's keep it full bright, that is 45. Great, you can see the three LEDs light up. The first one is red, second is green, and the third is blue. You might not be able to see the difference in second and third LEDs. This is just due to camera quality. Trust me the second is green, and the third is blue. Let me just comment out the blue color, and run this code again. Now you can see the first is red, and second is green. So this part worked pretty good. I will add some more random colors now. But before that, let's see what happens when we set the brightness to zero. As expected, the LEDs are completely off. Good then, I will continue adding more random colors. I don't exactly know what these colors are by the way. Now all the LEDs are set. In the while loop, I will increase the brightness up to 45, and then decrease it down to zero. And let's add 50 milliseconds delay between each change. You can see, we have got ourselves a very nice effect here. So we can just take some random color. Copy its RGB values. And set the values in the LED. I will comment out other LEDs. Set the brightness to 20 which is approximately 50%. And you can see we got the color we wanted. The code works pretty straightforward here. Set the color, set the brightness, and send. This part here, I have shot after shooting the original video, so you might feel the cut. This is the code to generate the rainbow effect. Obviously I haven't written it, look at these numbers. So I will explain you how I got it working. You have to go to this link here. First of all, you need to add the LED strip. Click on the strip, and select the number of LEDs you have. Now click add effect. We can easily get other effects with our regular program also. So here I am using the rainbow effect. Click on animation, and then control the settings, whatever you need. Once you got what you need, click generate Arduino code. Now let's copy this code in our notepad. Out of this entire code, we are only interested in this part. 
So I will copy this, and paste it in my main file. Let's rename it to the rainbow effect right. This function, set pixel color, we will replace it with the set LED. And after setting the LED, we will send it to the driver. Replace others also. Let's build it once to check where the errors are. We don't need this line here, we will add the delay later. This variable here, we will define it separately. If you check the code we copied, this is unsigned 16-bit variable. So let's define it. Now correct it everywhere. Resetting the strip is just like setting the variable to zero. So this is it. Now let's call this function in the while loop. And add 30 milliseconds delay. Run it now. You can see the nice rainbow effect towards the right. You can play with some more patterns, just follow what I did. This is it for this video. I hope things were clear. The video got very long, but I needed to explain the basics behind PWMDMA we can use the same logic in some other devices too. I guess I will try with DHT temperature sensors, and see if it works with PWM. Anyway, you can download the code from the link in the description. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.